Good morning, friends. Welcome to our Tuesday Bible study. I'm having to change things up a little bit today, so I'm running a few minutes behind. I hope you forgive me for that. Um, I would like to share with you this morning a passage from the 15th chapter of Matthew, uh, beginning with the 10th verse. It says, Then Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person. It is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then Jesus said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and that is what defiles the person. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, lies, slander. These are what defile a person. To eat with unwashed hands does not defile. May the Lord at his blessing to this reading from his word. What have we learned from 2020? Well, we've learned that people have not changed. They still panic. Many use hateful rhetoric when it'll pressure others into giving them what they want. Folks become especially irritable and irrational when they are afraid. We learn that when it really matters, many who we thought would step up did not, and others whom we didn't think cared rose up to be the church to those who were most in need. We learn that when people are angry and afraid, their words suddenly reveal more to us about their hearts than we ever really knew. We learn that we can find innovative new ways to do ministry and to get the gospel out to people as I'm doing right now on these social media platforms. We also learn that when some people feel like they're being told they have to do something, even if it's to protect others around them, even if it's to protect themselves, they will rebel and refuse to comply. So to sum all of that up, we really didn't learn anything new about people in general. Folks have always been afraid of change. They've always reacted with anger, hate, spite. They've always tried to force others to do things their way through coercion and shaming and threats. But we may have learned something about ourselves if we're willing to look at our actions and reactions honestly and in the light of Jesus' teachings. Let's look at what Jesus said to his disciples in this passage about how important it is to get our hearts right with God. Jesus said that, that our evil words and evil actions are all tied to the condition of our heart. Not our mind, not our environment, but our heart. So let me ask you as we move into this new year, what are you going to do to ensure that you have a right heart in 2021? What are you going to do to ensure that, that your heart grows closer to God and not further away? What are you going to do to ensure that you grow spiritually? What steps will you take to improve the condition of your heart? Will you try and curse less? 
we try and use more words of encouragement and, and fewer words of ridicule? Will you make the effort to, to curb your propensity to constantly feel the need to correct other people? Will you stop assassinating other people's character by your judgmental and sarcastic gossip? Will you even make a resolution to, to cut back on your gossiping in general? Or maybe you need to focus less on words and more on the actions in your life that need correcting. Maybe you need to be more faithful to study your Bible, to attend or, or watch the worship services and Bible studies. Maybe that sin in your life is, that is stealing your joy needs to finally be dealt with so you can find forgiveness and peace. Well, whatever it is you need to work on in order to become more faithful and more fruitful in your life, I can offer you some helpful and hopeful words this morning. And the most important thing I can share with you is this. You cannot fix any of these problems of the heart. Only God can do this for you. You see, the problem that you have isn't that it's really not really about your ability to control, whether it's controlling your words or controlling your actions. The real issue is your refusal to let God control your heart. You see, we become so lost in our sinful pride and, and in our fear that we refuse to believe that God knows better than we do what we need to be who we need to become, and what we need to do in this life. The truth is we do not trust God with our whole heart. We only trust our ability when we're able to control things ourselves and when we do not have control, as we've seen made so clear by this COVID pandemic, we become fearful and mistrusting of everything and everyone lashing out with hateful rhetoric, lashing out in, in hurtful ways. And all this is because our hearts are not truly focused on God and his will for us. We're not willing to yield ourselves to his will. And we're not really in love with God and with one another. The only way for us to get our hearts and the spiritual condition we need in order to be able to say the things we need to say and to not say the things that need to remain unsaid is to yield our hearts to the Holy Spirit's guidance. You know, oftentimes we, we say things even that we think are helpful. And in reality, we only cause more confusion, more pain, more grief. You see, that's because we cannot know what is in that other person's heart or mind, but God does. And when it's God whom we're allowing to lead us and guide our hearts, then we can bear great fruit for his kingdom by saying and doing the right things, which will bring healing and encouragement, instruction and hope to other people. It's by yielding our hearts to God's direction through the Holy Spirit that we find the strength and the humility to confess our sins and to truly repent, to turn around and go another way. That's God's stuff. And we must yield our hearts in order to yield our lives to him so that the Holy Spirit can fill us with God's strength. We're not strong enough by ourselves to turn our own lives around, no matter how much we may deceive ourselves into thinking we can, because if we could, we would have already done it. Only through our willingness to hear what Jesus told us to do, to admit how weak, we truly are in the face of temptation and sin 
And so to pray for the Holy Spirit to fill us and give us strength. Only through this can we finally reach a place of of self-awareness that we're able to get back on the potter's wheel and let God begin to remold us and reshape us into the people of compassion, of hope, of love, and of righteousness that we need to be and that we desire to be so that the lost and the hurting people in this world may experience the grace of God through our words and through our deeds. Get into the Gospels. Get on your knees and fall in love with Jesus who loved you enough to die for you. Fall in love with God who loved you so much he sent his only son to be your savior. That love will truly and forever change your heart and your life and will make 2021 your year of redemption, of power, and of hope. Sola gratia, friends.